Hello again, Mr. Parker. Well, how are you going today? Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, last time we spoke, uh, you were going to say a little bit more about breeding. Well, um, have you ever, well, or, or have you ever been on a farm? Have you, were you raised around animals? Uh, um, anybody who knows me knows I'm not a big animal yeah, person. Right. You don't come out of a house, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, just to give you as clear and as concise an example of it, you have to look at the breeding of horses. Horses? Horses. Okay. Because the way you breed horses is a bit more intimate in domestication than you do other animals. Okay. Um... And the way people approach it is they are there. And it's an exciting visual effect. Uh, and, and and I'm talking about on a small farm, not some mega corporate concern. You often have the mayor walk up into a little pen and she can't go forward any further. And you bring the stallion in, and he's obviously aroused. But to, 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 to get your horses bred as quickly as possible, and you know, what you paid your money for, the, the, uh, the horse's penis is usually grabbed and guided into the, the vagina of the, of the mare. Yes? Grabbed by what? Oh, by a, a breeder's hand. Okay. It might be yours if you were the, the uh, owner of a small horse farm. And now contrast that with what we have been talking about in early breeding of humans in the United States. Many of the masters wanted to be there when they would say, Get, uh, get in touch with Massa down the road who might have 2,000 acres, but he's got a good buck, and you've got four or five young girls who are, who are ready to, to, to be bred. You, you literally, this person that you're calling a buck, a, a, a young male animal of breeding attitude and age, but we're talking about a human being. But we're talking about a human being. And it could be as intimate and civilized as what you think two people getting together to have sex together today. They may, you can make a choice. But often there was no choice for the, 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 the Africans in it. And the people wanted to touch you. They wanted to dehumanize you, but that really wasn't what they were attempting to do. It was kind of a vile um, vulgarity. They were involved in sexual behavior with these chattel. And it's often what would happen, you know, if you also were a white master and you had some teenage sons maturing. This is where they would get their first experience with sex. So they would watch the slaves. Not only watch, <clears throat> they would participate. By touching. By touching, by being sexually involved. And yet they would, you know, pull themselves up, up together the next minute and these were chattel. And, but two minutes before, they were right down there in the mix of all of the breeding action, as they call it. So, the same way you described uh, the horse's penis being... Guided in. Well, Master could come and put his hands right in between you if he felt... And it was more often than you think. And out of these Christian, white-bred European-Americans... This is a system that they evolved and they were simply more controlled when they were trying to create these octums and 
and these things for the purposes that they had for them. But the breeder states around the Deep South had that name for a reason. The people were, they were trying to remix the people, the Africans, and, a, and a particularly the, the northern Africans that came down, you know, when the, when, when the north decided they were through with slavery. Well, they, what were they, what, many of those people were pushed down south. And they then lost all the rights they thought they may have had up in New York, wherever. And many of those people were fair-skinned. I mean, they, many of them passed, all of this stuff. But we know the, 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 the plantation, the New South knew who they were because there were wreckage that came with them. So it didn't matter often if you looked white. I mean, it was impossible to tell, but if they had the record, they could treat you as a piece of chattel. And, and they would, you know, they, they bred a darker, they redarkened the blacks. Because the blacks that evolved after 1640 or so, by this time had virtually become white. It's often mentioned in letters of people who visited the United States and they had heard about this slavery, but then when they got here they said, well you all seem to be related. So did they want to uh, redefine or make the distinction? Is that the reason why they redarkened or darkened? Yeah, it was to be able to control the people and to identify them. Right. And also, to make it clear, these people actually aren't us. Okay. I mean, the white people. Yeah. But in truth, they were engineering this all along. And this went on from the early 1700s until the Civil War. Ultimately, this is the kind of stuff that fueled the onset of the Civil War. So we're, we're talking roughly 150 years plus of actual human breeding. Well, yes. You seem kind of incredulous, but this is easy to verify in history. It's in all of it's in the uh, in our constitutional congress one of our greatest presidents was famous when he was a young man for 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 he loved quadrums not octrums not mulattoes and this this he became a president his name was George Washington our first president he actually had children of African descent. His children became involved in the Back to Africa movement because of the guilt that they felt about their father and their grandfather. So he had... Uh, he just had children. so many sexual encounters with these, because these women were slaves. Yeah. You know, and but he loved this looking. And he was a handsome man. Mm -hmm. It may have looked like he was courting someone, but these girls had no rights. Unlike and, the Rollins, Miss Mrs. Rollins. Unlike her, un unlike because of her circumstance in and Louisiana. time in yeah. Louisiana yeah. at that time in that space. Otherwise, it would never have existed. It was a kind of unique plantation in time. But George Washington, he actively uh, had sexual encounters with slave black, black girls. He had children from these slave black girls. Now, you say black girls. I'm a mulatto person, a different kind of mulatto. He had children by them with no thought. Okay. He had one son, finally, as he grew up into a mature man and began to realize what he had he was doing he had a son who when he died Washington he put in his will that this son when that son died who was an African you know was African blood would be buried in his tomb with him and he was in there 
all the way up to this up until the Civil War. Until the the cleaning of history. You know how when there's a great war, there are always wreckage that vanish. And th that's when the true storytelling gets to be done. The war is going on. And in our case, there was a group called the Daughters of the American Revolution. And yeah, they were killing each other en masse in the South, fighting these wars, Gettysburg. But these women were going about either destroying documents that tied them to, tied these, the, the, the great fathers of, of the Constitution and whatever, or if their life didn't look as clear as they thought it should be, they were going through literally clearing out tombs, making sure there was no evidence. So these are, what were they called? What was the name of the daughters of? The daughter, D-A-R. You all, you, yeah, and, and we all, everybody in the South, if you say the D-A-R. Daughters of the American Revolution. Yes. And these were white women. White women who were, they historically had ties to the original revolution the, when um, the colonies fought to be free from you, England. Okay. And they were the daughters of... The, of, of the revolution or the, uh, or the republic, but they were D-A-R. And they were a group and part of what they were doing was erasing information, uh, historical information, which did not square with the idea that they wished, they being white, so Europeans wanted to go forward about their George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, you name anybody, the, many of the men who were the signers of the original constitution owned slaves. Now, you mentioned Thomas Jefferson there. He, he, he had a very important role in history as well. Thomas Jefferson, we still consider him the primary framer of the constitution. The, the, the flowing language, all of the things that you know that our American constitution is about, we attribute to Thomas Jefferson. And was he involved in, in such things? Well, he, Thomas Jefferson had a large plantation. Right. Uh, many slaves, mm -hmm. many pla several plantations on his land. Okay. There were thousands and thousands of acres. And he, of course, was two-term president. He was president twice? Twice. Okay. And yet he still could not get enough of the power. He had, had not had enough of the power to release his slaves on his death. Mm -hmm. And many people do not seem to understand that part of that is because you are like a little Caesar when you are the master of a plantation. And, when it, and it's empowering. Mm -hmm. So in a way, a plantation is almost uh, uh, an area which can create a, a megalomaniac type persona or psyche. I, you know, you're, I wouldn't say those words, but those would be accurate, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, it was something that, you see, the DAR burnt all of the data that were little notes that different men gave during their lifetime about uh, their experience with slavery and either their misgivings finally you know how things come out 20 years after the president's dead? Well, they were thinking ahead then, but those documents are gone to dust mm -hmm. intentionally. So there was possibly men who, whose, whose morals uh, kicked in at some stage and they, they made certain uh, admitted, uh, admitted... George Washington was one of them. Okay. However, Thomas Jefferson was not. And he is considered the most sophisticated of those framers. He was a, uh, a legitimate, what you might call a, um, Scholar? a Renaissance man. Okay. You know, he was perfected in several major sciences all within a short period of time and he was perfected in them. And yet he could not let his slaves go. His plantation, was in ruins and in debt 
and he could not let his slaves go it, because the relationship between master and slave the master is empowered by the God it is part of the reason why this system went on so long and you don't know it until you get into it you know this is a, a thrill this is a joy ride and Thomas Jefferson who had at least five to eight children by a woman called Sally Hemings. And she was? She was his slave wife. And she was the sister of his white wife. Okay. And that's just the history of it. Right. So she she was black or she was mulatta? She was a quadroon. Would you like to explain what a, what a quadroon is? We, we it is the about offspring of a, of a mulatto and, and another white person. And then after a quadroon, we got to Austrian. Right. And we've spoken about Austrian. Right, we've, talk, we've spoken about those. Right. And now understand the Austrians were not the most valuable ones. The quadroons were because of the men's desire for these, these, these men and women. We often say just women, but it was men and women. Um, so was it, was it anything to do with the fact that they weren't uh, weren't quite black, so they weren't quite this slave chattel, but they weren't white either, so they had a, a, a exotic right. appeal. The more important part of it was they were not quite white. Okay. You know, that was seemingly what you come up to when I mean, you read into history. That's what motivated these men toward those type of women. New Orleans was famous for them. And uh, I suppose it's no coincidence that uh, you, you do see uh, a lot of wealthy men having this penchant, this, this uh, desire for this slightly exotic. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So would you say it's a, some type of throw, throwback to, to... It's, it's definitely related to our history as a nation. Okay. And it was a... I mean, the, like I say, the system of breeding people in this country, you know, we have gotten away from even thinking about that we did it, but it was a huge industry at one time. And it was intentional. And these were the Christians. You know, virtually the, the original people that came, they had all these pious attitudes about themselves, but flip it just one way and they became to me what I see as some of the most vulgar animal-like humans that ever existed because now we know what they were breeding they weren't just breeding black people or so these were their brothers and sisters first and second cousins we've, we've proofed that summer 2012 with DNA science, we've in our country we've we've tried to hide from it, not the blacks, the whites, but because of science, you can turn your head from it. But the fact is there now; these were the brothers and sisters that they were doing this to, and it, it was a macabre kind of thing. They were trying to prove to themselves that they were, on one hand, morally superior to these slavish chattel people and they actually were doing them a favor taking up out of the darkest ignorant Africa they knew nothing of Africa and Africa's history and civilization you can imagine and but they had their own rationale for it and and there are many papers of many um, famous men from the period that when you read into the, go into the Smithsonian and get the little letters and they, they wrote you know to each other nobody had a telephone so they wrote letters many of the letters have survived where the DAR couldn't get were into per people's personal uh, archives of letters back and forth and the letters are now being collected and put in his in history but it still opens up to you 
just a part, just a stinky little part of our history that you never hear much about. And what you're going to hear about when you do hear it is, it was brothers and sisters breeding brothers and sisters as if they were not so. And they believed that they were not brothers because there was a system of hiding from the next generation what the previous generation had done. But still, it was known. Black women in particular would always remind them that we were brothers and sisters. Whether, you know, they wouldn't maybe say how we were brothers and sisters because they were forbidden to. But they would always remind uh, 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 Miss Jane that I'm actually your, your great aunt. And you know, Miss Jane in the movies, it would just be too much for her little head to do it all. But it was true. And it was a way of keeping things straight. The truth, as much as the women could keep it going. Because understand, black women were actually in many ways freer than white women for much of the early history of this country. White women were just no more than you had you with things that brought wealth into a marriage and you handed it over to your husband and then you had children for him and you were in that state perpetually. So it wasn't much different than slavery. Many of the black women who witnessed the first Holocaust, they had to do all kind of things to survive. They did nothing to compromise themselves. They were slaves or as prisoners of war. Their job was to survive. And those were the people who brought us forward because we know now all of the males that were originally with the first shipments of the African slaves that came to this colonial country and the original number we got between 1640 and 1645 were 450,000 African slaves. More men than women. But one of the queer things that has that this proof that I mentioned earlier has brought us is none of the male DNA comes down to us today. None. 